You can't really be friends with anybody who has a hint of jealousy mm -hmm. about anything that you're doing. Certainly mm -hmm. about your success or your, you know, being celebrated or you cannot or anything that you have or anything yeah. that you have. You mm -hmm. cannot you cannot be friends. If you see that in somebody, I say those little whispers where somebody is like, hmm, mm, well, OK, mm -hmm. well, look at you. You, you. you cannot. You cannot. You have to distance yourself or you have to cut that thing. back to the pink elephant guys i am shanae and if this is your first time here thank you guys so much for joining me and if you are back again thank you so much for coming back before we jump in make sure you are following me on instagram and on tiktok and on facebook on all my social media platforms i would greatly appreciate it you can find me on instagram and on tiktok at the pink elephant underscore by shanae and on facebook you can search shanae pringle and you'll find me there if you are not subscribed to my youtube channel make sure you are subscribed if this episode resonates with you, give me a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. I love having conversation about these topics because I know that they resonate with not just me, but many, many, many other women. So I would greatly appreciate it. But listen, if you saw the intro, you know that today's topic is about friendship. And I am really like excited about this topic, but I know that this is a very touchy topic. I've gotten so many like requests to talk about this topic. Okay. So when I saw Oprah's, this clip of Oprah and Gail's interview come across the screen, I was like, you know what? This is a great opportunity to talk about friendship because as you guys know, Oprah and Gail have been friends for years. I feel like they are the uh, quintessential version of sisterhood and girl friendship. Um, so I think that this is a great time to dive into some of the deeper things as it relates to friendship. So today we're going to dig into all the things. There may be a part two, but um, we're going to just jump on in and get comfy, get your coffee, get your tea, get your water, and let's go. So Oprah said that you cannot truly be friends with someone who has even a hint of jealousy about anything that you do, you have, or you going to do. So I don't know about you guys, but like I've been in a situation where I felt like I couldn't share good news with a friend. And I remember a season of my life of, of it being that way because one, it was on me, right? It was on me because of my lack of knowing myself and walking into who God has called me to be. Because one thing about it is when you walk into who God has called you to be, you know that there is nothing that you can do to dim your light. Like that light that's on you is going to shine. Whether you like it, they like it, it's just inevitable. So to fight against that or to try to like shrink yourself is just impossible to do it. And you're wasting your time doing it. So at that time, I didn't understand the power, right? I didn't understand the power and the grace and the anointing over my life. So it was a struggle carrying that with me every day. Now, I want everybody to be very, very careful about how they hear this episode, because one thing that we tend to do is misconstrue one knowing themselves and being sure of themselves and being in alignment with God and and truly sitting in that purpose with being uh, maybe cocky or arrogant or um, stuck up or bougie, whatever words that people have thrown out there to make someone feel as if they can't stand in their, their power. We're not doing that today. OK, so let's go ahead and get that straight. So if this is our if this episode is starting to ruffle feathers already, go ahead and, and cut the video, cut the episode, because I'm going to get into it. And this episode is for my girls who want to walk into power. OK, this is for my girls who understand the power of friendship. This is for my girls who understand the power of sisterhood. This is also for my girls who may have done things wrong in the past, but they are in a place now in their lives to understand what confidence and alignment with God can do to transform their heart so that they can be a better friend to someone else. This is who this episode is for. All right. So make no mistake about it. If you're not ready to have a full and honest conversation, 
this episode is not for you. Period. Okay. Now that that's true. So let's talk about jealousy a little bit. All right. So jealousy shows up in different ways. And I've talked about jealousy a little bit before. And I've talked about like what that meant or what that can feel like in different instances. But I haven't really quite talked about it in terms of relationships with friends. And I want to talk about it a little bit because I have had to navigate this situation quite a bit in my life. And I've also learned that the, there are a few things that I need in a friendship, right? There, there, I don't, I don't want a lot. I don't ask a whole lot, but there are some core things that I need in a friendship. And if I don't have those things, I can't be truly like your friend. Okay. So when it comes to jealousy, Jealousy shows up in different ways, right? We have some friends who will outwardly try to demean you or try to put you down, like literally be like, girl, why are you wearing that? You look crazy because you wanted to pop out in a sequin dress or whatever, you know, or um, let's say you try a new style and they, you know, and it's, and everybody's giving you compliments and they're going to immediately bring you right back down. Like, Mm, you actually look girl you look crazy you do not look good don't let these compliments fool you and it's not from a it's not from a real and authentic place now it's one thing to be an honest friend but it's a it's another thing to be a friend who is really trying to hurt you to take and snatch away your confidence right so jealousy can be like very very like right there in front of you boom you know it you see it when you came out with the dress on and it was bomb they couldn't even look at you because they just couldn't handle how cute you were and they had to say something like yeah but your hair you need to do something with your hair your hair look good okay that that's an outward form of jealousy and then there are other ways that people could be jealous where it it is it's subtle right so let's say you got a new new job you got a actually let's say you got a promotion you go to your friend and you tell her that you have a promotion and it's like oh, okay look at you Okay, you, um, money, you got money, okay. And it's like, okay, that's, you know, it wasn't like a genuine, you didn't feel the love and passion behind, like, congratulations. It was just like, oh, okay, so I guess you're making money now. Okay, money, money, like money, okay, honey. Like, just that little thing, like that little bit of something right there, right? Um, and so it's kind of like an undertone. So then when you go and maybe let's say you go buy a bag as a gift to yourself for the new job, they might be like, oh, everybody has that bag. Or, yeah, I saw this other girl with that bag on, and, I, and that bag just looks so cheap to me. Okay, what? Like, that little undertone of jealousy. Like, why the bag got to be cheap, and why are you telling me about how many other people have this bag, right? Like, what is that? That's a little jealousy right there, right? And I'm going to point these things out because I, we all, if you haven't experienced it, good. But I, And if you are the person who's doing it, maybe I have to bring it to your attention so that you can know how someone may feel, right? Because we always want to be, like, in a position to examine ourselves because I do it all the time. I, I examine myself all the time, sometimes too much. So I want us to be able to be in a position to examine ourselves fully. So if you're hearing something that you may have said, you could easily go to your friend and be like, you know what, when I made that comment, did that – come off because that is not what I want to do and I want to apologize for it but we'll get to that in a minute okay another form of jealousy could be simply nothing no congratulations no you know no um absence okay they literally flee in the night okay so let's say you get a new job Let's say you buy the bag. Let's say you are, you know, really getting into your groove and you doing well at work and you notice that the friend just vanishes, like vanishes because they just cannot stand to see you grow and glow. Right. So they just have to flee. OK, so those are a few different ways that you may have noticed some jealousy or jealousy may have shown up, may have shown up in a friendship that you have with a sister. Um, and I, and I want to be very, very mindful that these aren't the only ways that jealousy shows up. You might experience something completely different, but these are a few of the ways that I want to talk about in this episode. Right. 
the thing that we have to be very, very careful about is how we how we confront the jealousy. So Oprah said that if someone that's a friend to you has even the smallest bit of jealousy, you cannot be their friend. I know for me, what I would do is I won. Like I said before, I tried to like shrink myself. So if I got a new bag, I would not tell my friend. I would never like, I would not mention it. I'm not about to be like, girl, I just got a new bag. Look at this cute bag I got. If I got earrings, I don't care if it was from Shein. I don't care if it was from Old Navy. I don't care where it was from. If I got something, I would be very, very careful about sharing it with them because I did not like the feeling that I felt when I shared something and it was like a comment behind it, right? Oh, that purse. Okay, yeah, I've been, everybody got that purse. Okay, like, so I stopped sharing things. I stopped sharing things. I felt like I couldn't really be myself. Um, for As an example, I remember when I first got, me and my husband, we bought a truck because we had two kids and my husband is a football coach. And and, and there I go, right? Here I am. I'm about to explain the reason why we bought a, a Suburban, right? And I don't even have to do that. But at the time, I felt the need to explain it to every single person that I came across who said something about the truck. Right. It's like, oh, y'all must about to be having y'all must about to have some more kids with that truck. Why y'all got that big old car? Y'all don't even have why y'all don't need all that space. Why do you care? Instead of saying, oh, congratulations on the truck or, oh, I like your car or nothing at all because I didn't ask for a response. Those were the comments that were made. And so I immediately went into explaining why I have this car. Oh, yeah, me and Pringle, we've been wanting a car. You know, my car was too small and Pringle wanted something more comfortable. And, you know, he does have football players that he drive from here to there. That is not anybody's business. So for me to feel the need to go into a whole explanation about why I bought the truck was a sign that I wasn't confident in where I was, okay? So you see how I'm putting it back on myself too because it's a shared responsibility to be able to stand in who you are, right? Especially when it comes to friendships, okay, and relationships. You don't owe anybody an explanation unless you owe them a true explanation, right? You don't. And I had to get over the idea that after everything that I did, I had to say something to make somebody else feel comfortable about my life. That doesn't make any sense. Let's think about it for a second. You worked really hard. You went to school. You got the degrees. You went. You even went back to school to finish your degree, or you went and got the certifications. You worked your butt off to, to climb the ladder, and you didn't even have a degree. Whatever your story is is your story, but you did it. So then you get to a point where you're able to see success and you feel like you got to explain your success to somebody. What kind of sense does that make? Like, y'all, I don't believe that God would have us be on this earth and not grow and not and not allow us to see the fruits of our labor. And I don't believe that God would have us. He would position us to be uh, poor, you know, on earth. Like God would not want that for us. So with that being said, every single blessing that we receive because we are in alignment and in position to receive that, that is something that we should feel confident about and celebrate loudly because it's a God thing. And I, I saw, I heard this um, this morning, I think I was listening to a prayer call, but it, it was it was talking about how sometimes, you know, the, the best things, the best blessings are, are blessings that people can see over you and they just realize it, it wasn't nothing but God. So those times where you 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 was counted out, okay? You had the baby in high school and everybody thought you weren't going to be able to have no job, you weren't going to make it through college. The baby was going to struggle, you was going to struggle and yet you graduated with honors, you got a business, you got your own car, your own house, you got a husband, you got you got a, a wife if it's men listening, whatever, and you're doing well and that people should be able to look at you and be like that's all God. So that's why we got to start worrying about what other people think about the blessings that God has placed in our lives because it's nothing but God. <laughs> it's nothing but him. So for us to feel shame about what God is doing for us, I feel like it's almost disrespectful to God, right? Like, think about that. If God has truly blessed you and he made it so that you would be able to overcome obstacles so that you could reap all the, you're reaping what you've sown, all the seeds you planted, and then you get the get to the harvest and then you'd be like, oh, man, I don't I don't want nobody to know I got all this corn in my harvest. I don't want God. I don't want people. 
Yeah, I did get a lot of corn this harvest, but it's it's only because um, you know, I saw somebody on TikTok and they showed they were doing it and so I just did it and I just got lucky. No, 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 no. You did not get lucky. You're blessed. So the idea that you can't share your blessings outwardly, you know, and I'm not talking about being boastful or being cocky or being like rude to people. I'm talking about being comfortable with being blessed. And we can go back to why we're not comfortable being blessed. It's rooted in like a historical context. It's rooted all the way back to slavery. But I'm going to stay right here in this place now because in 2024, we can acknowledge it. And then we need to do the work to get over that, that, that lack of confidence or that area that we need work on. We need to work on that, work through it, tease through it, figure out what you need to do to get to a place to be solid in your confidence and who you are and who God has called you to be. All right. So when it comes to that part of jealousy and friendships and relationships where you feel like you cannot outwardly celebrate without someone negatively tainting that or contaminating your spirit, you need to get away from that friend. And I'll take you through something that's personal for me. So I share, I, I've done so many episodes talking about being lonely. Um, I talked about finding your passion, all those different things. Y'all, if it wasn't for me letting go some of my, like, I'm talking long-term friendships, I never would have gotten to this place that I'm in right now. And it ain't their fault. It was my fault because I was holding myself back because I was afraid of what they thought. I was holding myself back from being a pink elephant. The pink elephant, and I'm looking at my sign on my wall, that could have been birthed years ago, but I wasn't ready because I didn't have the confidence because I did not believe who God had called me to be, because I cared too much about what my friends would say or what you guys would say on social media or on Facebook that I would not even post. I, go, back to, go back to a few years ago. I wasn't on no Instagram like that. If I was on Instagram, I was on Instagram maybe with my kids, maybe with my husband, maybe with a friend or two for our birthday, but I was never creating reels. I wasn't, I wasn't out there like that. So if I think about the reasons why, it's because I cared too much about what my friends thought about me. I didn't want to hear the criticism. I didn't want people to be like, what you doing? Why are you doing that? I didn't want to hear it. I was afraid to be the elephant in the room. And the thing about it is I've always been the elephant in the room. Sis, you have always been the elephant in the room. You've always been the pink elephant at that and going back, this is why I love my brand so much. And, and this is a great time. I know I got some new listeners out there. This is a great time to sit in the pink elephant meaning. The pink elephant was established because I finally got to a point where I'm going to embrace the fact that I am uniquely made. There is no one else on this planet like me. No one. So that means anytime I enter a space, no matter how uncomfortable it is, no matter how uh, um, how I'm not, I may not be used to the, the climate, I might not be used to the culture, I might not be used to the, the etiquette, I might not know about the etiquette, but I'm there and I'm going to embrace the fact that I'm in this space. I'm not going to try to shrink myself down. I'm not going to be a wallflower and sit on the wall and hope no one comes over to me. I'm going to walk into every space knowing that I am supposed to be in that space allow my energy to take up the space, right? And allow myself to be big because I have been designed to be big, period. There's nothing anybody can do about it. So that's what the pink elephant means, y'all. It means like really, truly embracing everything that makes you unique. Girl, if your hair long, your hair long. If your hair short, it's short. If you got a fade, you got a fade. If your hair pink, it's pink. If you, like, we gotta be all in with who we are, because that that way, when that jealous friend like tries to say something to make you, to shrink you real quick, you can catch it and you can throw that thing right on back, throw it right. And I don't mean by I don't mean throw shade back. I mean, like, you know, how a, a goalie play soccer. They not letting no balls in they in they goal. I'm not letting none of that come in and interfere with my energy and in my space like this space that I'm in this box that I'm in this I don't even want to say box because we're so much bigger than that right but the energy that I carry is sacred is big I can't allow 
somebody to come and contaminate the space that I'm in. That's where we got to be. And that means doing that with friendships. All right. So I touched on like that little bit of fr that friend who always has something negative to say. But what do we do when we feel like a friend is maybe like not so much saying something to shoot you down? But what if they're there, but they're just there to like s just keep tabs on you? Right. And I want to be very, very mindful about how I say this, because I know that. Um, a lot of times people listen to these podcast episodes and they put themselves right in those, in a, in, in the story and, and don't put yourself there. You know, I, I love you, but I don't, you, 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 no one's worried about you that much. I am speaking from a space of what I know. I've had so many conversations with other women. A lot of us have things in common. Okay. So what I'm talking about, if your toes get stepped on, mm. Do some examining because what I'm talking about today, I have already healed from and I've already mended those relationships with those people that needed that it needed to be mended with. So if you are a person who feels like this episode, like I'm specifically talking to you, you got to back up a little bit because I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, with that being said, a friend who is there, but they're not there. Right. Just watchful. Um, and you, you feel that. They're, they they only stay around just to know what you have going on. They're not there to add to your life. They're not there to encourage you. They're not there to be a uh, maybe even to be a shoulder to cry on and, and pray with you. They're not there for that. They're just simply there to watch and wait for things to fall apart. Those people who you got a business and they never, ever support your business, like, they never support your business. Now, and, and I also want to say, because this is a very, very controversial topic about friends supporting friends' businesses, right? But there is a different, it's, it's levels to support. You don't have to buy every single candle that I have. You don't have to buy every single tote bag that I have. But you can repost my post, right? You could, you know, call or you can comment on my post. You, if I've already shared with you what my social media means to me and my goals that I have for social media, sharing it with a friend is nothing. That's a way to show support. But to do nothing, to maybe like, you know, don't even show up on the bigger days that you might have something going on um, for your business or let's say you are talking to them about your business and they don't even try to be all in with you right they're just literally watching from the sideline the only reason why they stay connected to you and i'm gonna help you connect this dot real quick they stay connected with you so that they can know your move so they are your friends so that you can tell them what you got going on next hey girl what you got going on oh, okay are you about to are you about to put out a new tote bag oh, okay when, what, where are you putting it out at? How did you do it? What store are you using? How did you create it? Okay, are you, you what you what what um software do you use? They ask all these questions, but they never once buy anything. They don't repost anything. They don't like your videos. They don't even like your posts. Um, and 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 I'm not saying now like, and I want to just put something in there before we got before we all start getting our feelings about things. Have you asked them to do that? Have you communicated your goals with them? This is only this only is uh, relevant if you've already communicated what you want from your friend. Now, you cannot make this assumption of jealousy and, you know, whatever that, you know, underlining feelings. If you haven't yet expressed to your friend the things that you want and you need help with or support with. Or if you're not already like in communication about your goals, the things that you're working towards, because if you haven't done that, then they don't even know how to fit into your life and how they can support you. So let's make sure we're doing our part right as the friend who wants to be supported to make sure that we are sharing ways in which your friend can be supportive of you. OK, so if you have done those things and you realize that they don't even show up for you, you might want to examine the, the depth of that friendship. Right now. And I want to make sure I'm careful because, of course, everybody can't show up all the time. We know, like, everybody has a life. Some people are married. Some people have kids. Some people work, you know, jobs and some people have their own things going on. Some people might even be in a rut. But we know the difference between a friend who wants and desires to be there versus a friend who is 
has no desire to be there and has not shown any level of support at all. Not even from a well wish, not even from a text message, not even asking you, like, how are you doing? Right. They're just there only when things are popping off. Right. And they only ask a little bit of questions to enough to get some information, but they're not there to serve you. So that's another way that you might have to take a deep dive or a deeper look into what that friendship is. Are they really there to really like support you or are they just non-existent? OK, they may be just watching lookers. OK, they talk about it on TikTok a lot. If you want more okay. on that. And then there is another form of jealousy that um, I am coming to understand. And it's idolization. Okay. This is a weird one for me. And y'all, I have to be honest because I don't even like the idea of like the the word jealous to me is such a hard word to, to label somebody as. Or even I just feel uncomfortable saying someone is jealous of me. Right. And therapy. You got to be in therapy because therapy has helped me dig through and be okay with some the truths right like it's you can feel uncomfortable about it all you want to but the truth is the truth and I had to come to realize that it is the truth like I don't want to say that this person is jealous but they are I don't want to say this person has doesn't have good intentions for me but they don't I don't want to say that this person is idolizing the idea of me in a way that is detrimental to our friendship but they are and it shows up in different ways. And the moment that we're able to become honest about that and accept that is the moment that we're able to really, truly navigate that situation and that friendship so that we don't lose stride, right? And we don't lose confidence and we don't lose sight of our calling. Y'all, friendship is so important because it can either help you get you to your destination or it can pull you away from your destination, right? Right. And sometimes letting go of friends, like Oprah said, you have to either end it or you have to uh, make some adjustments to the friendship in order to be successful in who you are. Because we have to remember, like, our goal is to serve God while we're here on earth. Like, our goal is to do what it is that God has called us to do on earth. So that means your mama can't get in the way, your kids can't get in the way, your husband can't get in the way, and you dang sure can't let no friends get in the way of what God has called you to do. So if it if it becomes a battle of that where you trying to, like, foster a relationship and keep a friendship with somebody and it's causing you to pull back from your gifts and your callings and walking in your light, then you know that that relationship is not good for you. I think sometimes we sit around and we make up excuses about people or why people are the way they are. If you're anything like me, you you try to see the best in everybody. A lot of times in sisterhood, when we all come together, the reason why we cannot have interconnectedness, meaning really truly connect with each other in ways that are deeper than just some highs and some hellos and some where you get your sunglasses from is because we're not able to see everyone as human. We're not able to look past, maybe she didn't speak, but why can't I go speak? <laughs> we're not able to look past the fact that she didn't speak to you. So you are willing to risk your, your ability to evolve as a woman because she didn't speak to you. You can't evolve if you can't look past the fact that she didn't speak to you and you go speak to her first from a place of love. Not from a like, oh, hey, not that. More like a, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I've seen you before. I know we didn't get a chance to talk before, but I'm Shanae. Um, what was your name again? It's good to see you. How you been doing? Like truly, genuinely go to her to know like, how is she doing, right? So if we're not able to do those things, we lose the ability to evolve as a woman. Every time that you are the person that steps up and, and maybe the bigger person, quote unquote, every time you're able to do that, you evolve as a woman. And you'll find that you're not losing anything by being the first person to speak out of love. You're not losing anything at all. Actually, you're gaining something by being able to be mature enough to go to another woman and extend grace to her because we also have to put ourselves in position to be able to um, see things from a bigger picture 
it's some days you don't want to speak to nobody. You barely give a hello. I know I do. And I, it's funny because everybody, my cousin just said this yesterday. She was like, Shanae, but you are so social. I'm social, but I'm not social all the time. You know, there are many times where I might come in and I might say, hey, hellos, and just sit down and just, you know, and be, and just be be present. I might not start socializing with everybody. It, there may be days where I don't even have anything to say or maybe days where I don't have anything to give. So there, there, it, it is not true that I'm uh, just, you know, the social person all the time. No one is. The difference is I know that for my purpose in life, my purpose depends on me evolving as a woman. Okay, again, my purpose in life is dependent on me, my evolution as a woman. So I can't afford to get mad at somebody who didn't speak to me and have an attitude with her. Like, I can't afford to do that because I'm losing my ability to evolve in that moment. Again, every single time you make a decision to give someone grace and to allow a woman to just be who she is, even if you don't agree with it, even if you don't like it, the moment you make the decision to allow someone to be who they are and meet them where they are at, you get an opportunity to evolve. And further than, furthermore, you get an opportunity to be somebody to that sister. Like, you get an opportunity to plant a seed in her life that could possibly help her grow and overcome whatever trauma that she may be facing. I don't know, y'all. Like, I'm not saying that it's on you to heal people, but you don't know. You never know what part of the journey that that person is in and how you played a role in them getting over the finish line. You don't even know your impact on other people's lives. So why not try to be a positive force in their life as opposed to a negative? We can be negative all day long. Anybody can be negative, but it takes a true woman to be able to walk into someone else's negativity and create positivity from that. Like, y'all, sometimes I make it a goal. I ain't gonna lie to you. Sometimes I make it a goal that when I see somebody who giving me weird shifty energy, like, mm, like right when I walk in the door, I will go up to her and I will have a whole full blown conversation. By the end of it, y'all, I can't tell you how many times women have been like, oh, you cool. I thought you was kind of like, and I'd be like, no, like, I mean, get to know me first. And then if you don't like me, that's okay. Because we got to remember, you are not everybody's cup of tea. And I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And that's okay. You don't even have to be my cup of tea. And I don't have to be yours. But we can still exist together and possibly learn some things from each other, whether it be you are in finance, I'm in content creation, you bake cakes, I'm, I, I make coffees, you do floral arrangements, I make candles. It still lends itself to be able to work with each other in different ways. Y'all don't have to be best friends. I don't believe that all of us are going to be best friends. We're not. We're not. We're, we're just not. And I do believe that if we have been best friends before, the level of friendship can shift over time. And maybe we were closer before, but maybe it's time for us to pull back so that we can allow the person that needs to be closest to us to be in that position now. Listen, y'all, because I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, keep going on and on and on about this, but I do want us to consider what if, and I've said this before, what if it's time for the seat that you have been saving for someone else to be occupied by someone else's hips. Okay. What if you've been waiting and waiting and waiting for your friend to try to get interested in your podcast and you know, you know, she good at photography. You've been wanting her to come and work with you on your podcast, do some pictures and all this stuff, but your friend just not there yet. She got a lot of other things going on. She is, you know, trying to get, have a baby and start a family and, or maybe she just, you know, is not interested in doing that right now. She just want to focus on her other job. Like let that friend be, but let her be in love, right? So you can let somebody be, right? We all know how to cut somebody off and just like not talk to them anymore. I'd be like, mm, well, since you ain't trying to grow and make no money, I'm done. We can do that. Or 
we could be like, okay, no worries. Let me know when you're ready. I'm, I'm always here. Would love to collaborate with you. And then move on to be able to allow somebody else to come into your life. Go to the networking mixer. Go to other social events in your, in your community. Meet new people who are ready to be in position to support and collaborate with you. Let that seat go. Let someone else sit down in that seat. And I, I want to say this because I want this to come full circle. And I'm going to do a part two because I am going to bring, I'm going to bring some friends on so we can talk about this in depth, okay, in terms of friendships. Um, but I, I want to bring this about, bring this around full circle. The moment that I stopped saving seats for friends that I'd had years and years and years ago was the moment that I gained new friendships relationships and partnerships with people who could elevate my business okay all right even some of the friends that I was not that close with back then have become super close to me now because they are in a season of their lives that is in alignment with the season that I'm in and we can really do a lot more things together so I find myself talking to them more about business stuff um, creativity, um, traveling, um, you name it. Those people that maybe I didn't talk to as much before, we like talk all the time like this. We're like this now. Maybe we didn't even see eye to eye before, but now we are like tight because we the, this season of our lives is, is, is matching and we're able to do so much for each other at this point in our lives. That doesn't mean that the friend who was there doesn't matter as much. But we have to remember, like Oprah said, you don't have space for anyone who is jealous of you. You can't. You can't have space for them. You have to start to distance yourself. And more times than not, they may come back around because we got to remember, we don't know what they're going through in their life. We don't know what they're trying to overcome. All we know is we can't afford to allow them to keep us from our destiny from our purpose, from our calling. So if that means it's between me and you, sis, if that means it's between 10 years of friendship and me growing where I need to grow and me being able to grow and glow freely, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to let you go. But it's no love lost. I just choose me. And I would want you to choose you as well. See, that's the thing. Let's be happy for each other, even if that means us disconnecting for some time. Let's be okay with that. Like, let's have a good breakup, right? Let's break up. Let's have a, a amicable breakup. Like, you know, like when people be like, it's a, it was an amicable breakup, meaning it was no fuss, no fight. We just sat down and we just decided, look, you take these two pens, these two ink pens. I'm going to take this remote. You know, you take the coffee maker. I'm going to take the mug. And everybody is compromised, but everybody is okay. And that means when we see each other in the streets, we can still have a full conversation. We can still laugh. Matter of fact, we can still maybe go get drinks, but we're just not going to be talking to each other and investing in each other's time or in, in each other's lives as much as we were before. And that is okay. I would much rather someone decide to distance themselves from me, right? Like what if they felt like, let's, let's put the shoe on the other foot. If someone felt like I wasn't being a good friend to them in the season of their life where they may need something from me and they've communicated it to me and they've given me a chance to be supportive or step up to it or decide whether or not I can meet those expectations and I still don't, I would rather them choose their, themselves than to me, than, for, than to allow me to be the reason why they don't do what it is that they're called to do, right? Don't allow any one person to keep you from God's purpose. Y'all, this is such a good topic. I can't wait to dive into it a little bit more on part two, but if this episode resonated with you at all, definitely leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts about jealousy and friendships and navigating that. Have you had to deal with that before? Have you been a jealous friend? You know, um, maybe you've had to walk away from some relationships because y'all walking away from friendships is like a breakup. It is a grieving process, but it's necessary. 
is so necessary. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Share this video in your group chat. Share this video amongst your friends. Post it on your Facebook page. Um, it would mean so much to me. But until next time, guys, I'll see you back for part two. Bye, y'all.